Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and this is Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, my faith grows stronger, and I learn how to be an overcomer. One of the reasons we say that is because we don't want to waste any moment of Faith School. We want to release our faith in the very beginning that this is what's happening this whole time. So get your Bible and get uh, something to make a note with. Come on into the classroom, put everything else on pause and hold, and let's believe the Lord to be ministered to today. Father, thank you so much for being so gracious and kind to us. Your goodness exceeds uh, exceeding above what we have asked or thought. And so we, uh, we, we reach out to lay hold of more of you and, and revelation and guidance and help and utterance and ability to understand and to come up higher. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you look please in the great textbook, the Bible, in Mark 5, we'll begin uh, today, continuing our study of the healing of the woman with the issue of blood. Like all of these, this, this passage is so rich with revelation. It's, um, it's not complicated, it's not mysterious, but it is something the enemy so seeks to hide from believers. Uh, and he does it, the enemy's favorite substitute for truth is religion. That's his favorite mode of operation. Uh, when people think about the devil, they, you know, they tend to think of some Hollywood something, you know, some monster with horns and that kind of thing. But nothing could be further from the truth. He never comes as a monster. Uh, that'd scare, scare you and make you want to go away from him. Uh, he doesn't want you to run away from him. He wants you to receive him and listen to him and believe his lies. And so the scripture says that he transforms himself into an angel or minister of light. He, his, his favorite way of operating is to try to convince you that he's from the Lord. And that's why there's, there's so much religious stuff that is absolutely devilish. It purports to be of God, and the truth is, it's from the devil. And you say, well, how, how can I tell the difference? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Get yourself a textbook. <laughs> uh, we, we've got the instructions from the manufacturer. Is, is that true or not? Yes. And, and you judge everything by two big things. You judge it by this book. And you judge it by the spirit that is in you as a believer who happens to be the author of the book. So um, uh, there's a lot of religious stuff that is absolutely not God. And you've got to be on the watch for it so that you're not tricked and deceived. Uh, let's begin reading in, in Mark 5, 25. The healing of the woman with the issue of blood. It says, a certain woman which had an issue of blood... Twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians. Well, you know, over twelve years, you could try a lot of stuff. And uh, she had spent all that she had. So that reveals that she had something. You know, you can't spend what you don't have. And if you didn't have much, you'd have run out after the first couple of months. But she was able to keep spending year after year, until now, she's out. She has spent everything she's uh, had. Uh, one of these accounts says, even all her living. So she's at the point now 
where she has spent everything, including just what you need to live off of. So not only is she sick, but she's absolutely broke. And is, that, is any of that the will of God? Hmm? Is it God's will for you to be sick and hurting and infirm and weak and not able to do things for 12 years? No, no way, no how. That can be the will of God. Uh, and is it God's will that, that this thing eat up all of your money, everything that you've ever worked and saved or accumulated or uh, ever how you got it, if you inherited it from your parents, whatever, and they worked hard for it, that this uh, stinking disease has eat up all of your prosperity. That sounds like stealing. Huh? That sounds like destruction. And it said even though she has gone through all of these procedures with all of these physicians, that she's not one bit better, one translation says, not a bit better, but had gotten worse. So all of that pain and suffering and all of that expense is for nothing. Nothing. She had been better off, uh, you know, in her case, not to have spent a dime or even tried. But we talked about that last week. It wouldn't have been okay for her to just sit back and give up. So she is fighting against this the only way she knows how. And that's right. The Bible said fight the good fight of faith. But her problem was she reached the end of what man could do for her. And nothing, Dr. Luke, who's a doctor, he said she couldn't be healed of any doctor. So that means there was nothing in medical science of her day that could help her. And that's still true today. I mean, over and over again, you get to the place where uh, there's nothing that men know that can help you. But does that mean it's the end, that you're just to quit? Or is there healing by the power of God that doesn't make a difference? What's wrong with you? It can make you whole. But it's, it wasn't just based on the power of God. The, the Lord turned around to her when she touched his garment and when this miracle happened in her body and he said, your faith did that. Your faith made you whole. And that's the phrase that the enemy doesn't want us to get. He, he, he tries to obscure that with religion, immediately jump in and go, well, yeah, but you know, uh, it, it was really, you know, God's power that healed her. And, you know, that was if it happened to be his will. No, the Lord could have said it was the power that healed her if that's what he wanted to say. Yes. Right? And if that would have been the main thing to emphasize, he would have. And certainly it was the anointing that did the work. But the anointing was on him the whole time. And a lot of people were touching him and nothing was happening. No, we should not emphasize the will of God because it is the will of God. You don't have to labor over that. You shouldn't emphasize, keep talking about, well, it's the power. If we could get the power. if we, No, the power source is constant. God is constant. He's consistent. What is the factor that we need to be focusing on? It's the faith. I said it's the faith. That's what Jesus emphasized. And it obviously was not just everywhere because even in this big crowd this day, a lot of people touched, but nothing happened when they touched until this woman pressed through the crowd and touched. And the moment she touched, the power flowed. Whew. The power flowed and the power changed her body. And just like in a moment, what 12 years <laughs> of spending and, and going through everything couldn't even phase the power of God completely fixed in a moment of time. Can God still do that, do that today? Yes. Can God still do that today, class? I want to know. I think we have all agreement yes. that yes, yes. Do we have all agreement? Yes. I'm looking at the big class. Yes, amen, amen. 
Uh, go back with me to Matthew's account. We, we touched on this, and I want to I look at it again. Matthew 9. Romans 10 tells us that faith is of the heart. The text actually says in Romans 10, For with the heart man believes. What part are you being? Your heart. Uh, now there's a lot to be said about that. Uh, but one of the big things is that the scripture distinguishes between your heart and your head. Uh, you may not know all about what, what your heart is exactly, but you can know it's not your head. <laughs> huh? And how many remember Proverbs 3 talks about trust in the Lord with all your heart and, and lean not, don't lean to your own understanding. So can you see a real clear distinction between heart and head? Uh, Said out loud, I don't believe God with my head. Your intellect. Faith is not of the intellect. Faith is of the heart. And so you'll see sometimes people say, well, I, you know, I, uh, I just can't believe that because I don't understand it. <laughs> no, you don't know what faith is. Faith has nothing to do with your understanding. Faith is a choice. And you can choose to believe something that you have no understanding of. And in our current state, we won't understand a fraction of what's going on when the, with the power of God. And with some of these things. We can understand more. That's why we have faith school. But um, if you wait until you understand before you're going to believe, then you actually are not operating in faith. You're walking by sight. But faith is of the heart, not the head. And you'll see this in, in Matthew 9. Matthew 9, 20, it says, Behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment, for she said within herself, she said it within herself, if I may touch just his garment, I shall be whole. Another translation says, if even his garments I touch, I shall be saved is the literal rendering of it. Somebody says, well, I thought she was talking about healing. The same word is used. We talked about this some weeks ago, sozo. The same word is translated saved, is translated healed. And there's no discrepancy with that because was she saved from this awful condition? Was she saved from it impoverishing her and killing her young and all of that? Yeah, uh, we need to be saved from sickness, just like we need to be saved from sin. And we have been. The Lord, how many know the Lord went to the cross, uh, not just in part, but completely? Yes. He went to the cross, He went to the whipping post, and He went to the cross, spirit and soul and body. And He obtained a complete redemption for us. How many will testify? He, he obtained a complete redemption. Redemption for us. When he said, it is finished, <laughs> did he leave anything out? No. Is there any part of you that got missed, wasn't quite redeemed? No. And you see, reading Isaiah, reading Matthew, reading Peter, reading all these different places, he bore our sins he, he, in his own body on the tree, but he also took our infirmities. He bore our sicknesses. He carried our pains, the scripture says. He bore the chastisement of our peace on him. Did he, did he bear everything that would cause depression and confusion and mental anguish and problems? Did he bear everything that would cause a physical problem, every kind of disease? He did. He did. Uh, even, you know, though most are not enjoying all of it, doesn't mean he didn't buy it and pay for it. <laughs> doesn't mean it's not available. So she said within herself, the, the Amplified says, she kept saying to herself, 
or within herself. If I only touch his garment, I shall be restored to health, is how the Amplified put it. So we, we mentioned uh, on yesterday's class, asking the question, uh, does God hear you when you speak in your heart? Because it says she said this within herself. Go with me back to 1 Samuel, the first chapter. We'll see another example of this that's uh, very clear. 1 Samuel 1, the, this first chapter gives the account of Hannah, who later became the mother of the great prophet Samuel, who at this point was unable to conceive and have a child and was distraught over that, and just for, I guess, years had been depressed because she couldn't conceive a child. And um, she's at the temple praying, and verse, uh, verse 10 and 11 says, She was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept sore. And she made that commitment that if the Lord would, you know, give her a, a son that she would give him to the Lord. Verse 12, it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunk. <laughs> and so Eli said, how will you be drunk? You you here here in church drunk? <laughs> you better put the bottle away. And and Hannah said, No, my Lord, I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit. I've poured out my soul before the Lord. But did you notice it said that she spoke in her heart? Everybody say that say that out loud. She spoke, she spoke. In, her in her heart. Her lips moved, but she wasn't making a sound. Did God hear her? <laughs> well, if you keep reading, then when uh, Eli realized that she wasn't drunk, uh, he said, well, go in peace. God, the God of Israel, grant you your petition. And man, when she heard that, actually, she got in faith. She decided, well, that means the Lord's heard my prayer. And so she counted it done and the scripture said she was no more sad. And when you get in faith, you'll be no more sad too. Amen. huh? And uh, next thing you know, here she is with child. Praise God. And, and that was in response to a silent prayer. So does God hear you when you speak in your heart? Well, again, what is, what is faith of? What part of your being do you believe God with, not your head? Now that doesn't mean that you don't need to lift your voice and speak out loud at times, because numerous times you do. But it also doesn't mean that you have to wait till you get back home to pray. You can be in the middle of situations where it's just not convenient, or you will be disruptive if you say something out loud but you can speak in your heart and God will hear you in the middle of any situation, any circumstance. And it's, that's, that's the part of your being that you're believing him with anyway. You're speaking in your heart and you're believing in your heart. And you, you are a spirit being. God's a spirit being. He knows mm -hmm. what you're saying in your heart. Can you say amen? Amen. Praise God. Go with me back to Mark's account, Mark 5. Now this is significant because this is how this woman with the issue of blood began to release her faith. Uh, Mark 5, 25, the woman had the issue of blood 12 years, suffered many things, many physicians, spent all she had, nothing better but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said. Notice how every writer is so pointed about this. She said it. <laughs> and what did she say? 
if I may touch but his clothes. Why would she say it like that? Well, it's a long ways in your weakened condition from the outside of this mass mob, right, to getting to him. But that was, that was where she's going to release her faith when she touched. And so she's, she set her face to do it, and she believes that when she touches, I shall be whole. I shall be whole. What are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying about your situation? I know um, I had the privilege of working at uh, Brother Kenneth Hagin's ministry for a number of years. So thankful for that. And uh, uh, man, he, he functioned, lived faith, taught faith every day of his life. And he's in, he's in heaven now operating in greater faith. Uh, but where the finances for the ministry was concerned, he would say things. And some things he'd say privately, I'm sure, but other things he'd say publicly. Because, you know, the ministry was not just him. It affected a lot of people. It was the Bible school. It was the church. It was a lot of things. And so uh, at one point he said, uh, it just came up out of his spirit. What part of your being do you believe? With your heart. Up out of his heart, he said, uh, it was actually one of, the, one of the big conferences, he said, somebody is going to give the ministry at one time a $1 million offering. And, uh, and, and we all said, Phew, praise God, you know. <laughs> and this, this has been decades ago. And because uh, that hadn't happened before in, in, in that ministry. And that came up in his heart. So he said it. Uh, notice in 2 Corinthians 4, and they'll, uh, they'll put it on the screen for us as well, but 2 Corinthians 4, 13, it talks about the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. You know, the scripture refers to the spirit of fear. God didn't give us the spirit of fear. But 2 Corinthians 4, 13 says, We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed... Therefore, have I what? Spoken. spoken. And we also believe, and therefore we what? Speak. We speak. There's no faith without believing and speaking. Speaking. Whether it's speaking in your heart or speaking out loud, it's connected. And so he got that in his heart, and he believed that. So how do we, how's one way we know he believed it? He said it. Is that right? He said uh, uh, somebody is going to sow into the ministry all at one time a $1 million offering. $1 million offering. And so, well, months went by, and I think it was a couple of years went by. And uh, I was monitoring one of his classes. I, I would sit in his classes, and sometimes when he was gone, I'd, they allowed me to to teach the class. And so I would see him in, in the speaker's room and, and um, we heard the report that came into the, the office that morning, two cashier's checks for 500000 each. Well, that's a million dollars. Is that right? <laughs> At one time. And so uh, he announced it to the class. Oh man, we, were sh we shouted. We praised God. We thought, look at that. Look at that. One, all at one time. One million dollars. And so we shouted and, and had a good time. And after the class, I went out the back door to get in my car. And I, I, just, I was still thanking God. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. And the Lord spoke to my heart. He said, what are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying? Well, we had a ministry even then. And we, you know, needed things for the office and all this. And I, I, I realized, well... Uh, Hadn't been saying anything. <laughs> what, what does that reveal? Not believing anything in that area. And so I saw it. I, I need to say something. I need, and so I don't just need to say anything. It needs to be real to me, right? I, I need to believe it in my heart and then say it with my mouth. And sure enough, not long after that, we begin to say, this is going to happen. 
Hallelujah. And it didn't happen overnight, but within not too long, it happened. And then we've said a bigger thing. And then we've said a bigger thing. And we've said a bigger thing. And they just keep happening. So, what are you saying? Huh? What are you saying? Uh, don't, don't reach out to say some grandiose thing just because you heard somebody else say something big that's not real to you. That doesn't work. It's got, it's got to be in your heart, of your heart, from your heart. One of the things that you can say is, uh, I'm going to pay off all my bills. <laughs> right? I'm going to pay off all my debts. Or just focus on one. You know? Or if it seems too big to you, uh, focus on the little debt and go, we're paying that off. Hmm? I claim more than enough money coming in to pay that off. I call that paid for. We're paying that off. Not, well, we hope so. <laughs> we'll see. You know, I sure want it to work out. I, I need it. That won't do you any good at all. At some point, you got to become fully persuaded, right? That's from the language about Abraham, that he became so persuaded, he, he received the name God gave him. His name changed, right? And Sarah changed, her name was changed. And they were saying it every time they called each other's name. Father of many nations, they hadn't got a child, not a one. Huh? Princess, mother, doesn't have one. Yeah, but God calls those things that be not as though they were. What are you saying? What are you saying? You need to be saying something. Something that's real to you. This woman heard the things concerning Jesus and all that was going on over there. She got, how many know that was good news to hear that so you could be healed by the power of God? A lot of people have already been healed by the power of God. Man, that stirred her up and she got so stirred, she said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get over there and touch him. I don't care what it takes. If I can just touch the edge of his clothes, I shall be whole. Hallelujah. And she got exactly what came out of her mouth. She was made whole. The Bible uses the very same words. Exactly what she said is exactly what happened in her body. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. And now time's up again today. Said out loud, I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome this world by faith. I'm strong in faith, giving glory to God. We'll see you next time here in Faith School. I've got the victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website. Or call us at 941-702-7390.